still pound for pound the best in the world. Well, there is a stunning outcome. An upset. A huge upset. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. Crossover Boxing is back on the zone, and this time it is bigger than ever with our brand new X Series, where we get stars from the world of sports, social media, and entertainment a new platform as they gear up for their entrance into the squared circle. Now, look, we're ready for a big night of boxing this Saturday, live on the zone pay per view from a sold out O2 arena. And trust me, the zone boxing show has you well and truly covered. Starting right here, right now, at the pre fight press conference. We're by the banks of the River Thames, not far from the iconic London Bridge at Glazers Hall. fight week steps up at gear. This is the final chance for the fighters to have their say before stepping into the ring on Saturday night. But his own boxing show is here. Welcome to X Series 001. Welcome to the magnificent Glazers Hall for the pre-fight press conference for our first ever DAZN X Series. Now look, obviously this is DAZN and this is the X Series. We had to go big. And what bigger than a return of KSI, who's not boxed for a few years. So he's decided to do what most people do, come back and fight twice. He's fighting twice, people, on Saturday night, which I still find crazy. He's kicking the thing off with swarms. He's ending it with a professional boxer, Pineda, which, again, is crazy. Remember, it is live on the zone pay-per-view. You see that QR code that you can see right now? If you want to watch the action, scan that right now. Trust me, you don't want to miss the action on Saturday night. It's sold out from the O2 arena, so you can't get a ticket, so you've got to scan the QR code to make sure they watch the action. Now, it isn't just about KSI on Saturday. There are some really good matchups as well. You've got Face Temper versus Slim, which I think is a fantastic fight. Remember, it was supposed to be Face Temper versus Blueface. Slim was like, you know what? Two weeks notice, I'll take the fight. Who's doing that? And then you have Face Sensei versus King Kenny. I mean, come on. And, and this could be a loser leaves town fight. Deji versus Fuzi. Deji's lost his last three. Needs a win. Fuzi needs a win as well. So it should be really, really good. Look, there's loads to come. We are going to hear from the guys in the press conference. But let's hear from the fighters first. As this is what they've had to say to the zone. Uh, so, Swarms, what comes to mind when I say, well, firstly, Swarms? General Boss. Misfits Boxing. Good association. KSI. Big Pussy. The O2. Hometown. Who wins, KSI or Jake Paul? Jake Paul. You want your next fight to be against? Jake Paul. So, face temper, what comes to mind when I say slim? Lemur. England. Rowdy. Misfits boxing. KSI. Face temper. Face clan. Motivational film or song? City of God. Who wins, KSI or Jake Paul? Jake Paul. You want your next fight to be against? KSI. Your dream opponent is? Bruce Lee. King Kenny, just tell me a little bit about what a motivational film or song is for you. Uh, motivational film, Rocky, but the fourth one. Song, Alicia Myers, I want to thank you. Words on King Kenny. The King, hard worker. Misfits boxing? Good event. Worst crossover boxer. Worst crossover boxer? <laughs> Tyrone Woodley. <laughs> Who wins, KSI or Jake Paul? 
KSI. What do you think about Face Sensei? He's good, but I'm better. A book, a book on your life would be called Born a King. What will people see on Fight Night? Ring IQ, good boxing, and uh, we're going to go to war. You want your next fight to be against? One step at a time. I need to beat Face Sensei first. Final fighting words. Good luck. You're going to need it. So, Fuzi, tell me what you think about these words when I explain them to you. So, firstly, we've got England. Beautiful. Fuzi. The Wolf. Misfits Boxing. Legendary. Worst TikToker. Evil Hero. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's go. <laughs> Who wins, KSI or Jake Paul? Jake Paul. Deji. Who? Yeah. Cheat meal. I don't cheat. Dream opponent. Deji. What people will see on fight night? A wolf unleashed. You want your next fight to be against? Deji after he complains that I got lucky the first time. Final fighting words. You. So, Deji, tell me, adrenaline junkie or a day of rest and relaxation? Uh, adrenaline junkie. Tell me about Fuzi. A guy. Misfits boxing. Amazing. Who wins, KSI or Jake Paul? KSI. Deji. A winner. You want your next fight to be against? Mike Tyson. <laughs> Dream opponent. Errol Spence. The O2. Big. What people will see on fight night is... Punches. Final fight in words. All the best. The pre-fight press conference is about a minute. I think a minute. We're going to be going soon. You never know who you're going to find in these things. Look who's with us. Scrappy Ramirez is here in the UK. And you know what he just did? He brought out his phone and he showed me his last knockout. Just to remind me of who he is. Ridiculously good knockout. This is crazy, isn't it, though? Hey, crazy, but... mm. Mm. One second. We'll get that working in a second. Let's hear you now very, very quickly. So, again, coming off that good knockout, what next for you? What's next for me? Uh, November 5th on uh, Soto Ramirez Bivo card uh, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, we're looking to make that happen, you know, but I'm staying focused. I'm ready. And, uh, yeah, whatever they put on the table, I'm, I'm meeting it, taking it. <laughs> we want to see that car. That's going to be a fantastic car, by the way. Bivol Ramirez, by the way, is ridiculous. Honestly, one of the best light heavyweight fights that can be made. Obviously, that fight is live on zone as well. Um, talk to me about this. This is crazy. 20,000 at the O2 Arena. You're seeing the attendance here from the media. Did you ever think this would happen with YouTube boxing? No. I mean, it's a, again, it's a sold-out event. We think, us as boxers, we do this for real. We can't we can make these numbers. We don't, we, we don't make these numbers. And uh, these creators... Sorry. And these creators have, are making the numbers. They're bringing new eyes. So that shows me that there's another side, you know? Let's combine boxing with creators, you know? And uh, let's see what, ha what happens, you know? Is there a lot of respect? Initially, I felt that when YouTubers first started to enter the scene, there was almost a bit of a disrespect towards them, maybe because we didn't think they took the sport seriously. All these guys have trained. They've got some trainers as well with them. The respect from boxers to YouTubers is starting to come together, right? I mean, I respect anyone who steps in the ring, point blank, period. What we do is not easy. We don't play boxing. People die, you know? So if you step in the ring, I, I respect you. Now, don't, don't, don't come in here and... Uh, expect everything's gonna be easy you know because you got to work for this man so I, I i give them the respect yeah what do you make of care size fighting two people on the same night it's funny because a lot of you boxers say i'll fight you on the same night two people he's actually doing it he's fighting swarms then he's fighting a professional fighter in pineda i mean look pineda's record isn't great but he's a professional boxer this is what he does what do you make of that uh, listen we we spar four or five people in the in, in the gym you know the only difference they got headgear so, I mean, I'm not surprised, you know, he, he, he wants to prove a point. If you're not a, a boxing fan, that looks cool. I'm a boxer, it's, it's regular, we do this. So, but again, I respect, I respect, I respect 
the fact he's fighting two people and he's trying to he's trying to show the world what what, what he's capable and I know he's coming for Jake Paul. So hey, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens indeed. KSI has just entered the building. We can see we, we are nearly ready to kick this thing off. He's with um, promoter as well up there, Kali Salon. We are nearly there. KSI versus Jake Paul. Now, it's crazy for me from a hardcore boxing perspective to say that is one of the biggest fights that can be made financially right now. There's maybe two or three fights out there that are bigger than KSI Jake Paul. Hey, that's a sold out event, you know, worldwide. Top creator on, on in the States, top creator, UK. Uh, I think that's a, that's a great fight just overall, man. Uh, and you know, both both guys are taking the sport serious. So I want to see that fight happen. Finally on you, you're here in the UK. A lot of fighters come over and want to fight in the UK. Do you want to fight over here soon? Absolutely. I mean, on my, I got to go, I got I to gotta see where I want to fight, right? O2 Arena is, is the spot. So I'm already in here, you know? My next stop, is, I'm, I will fight here. So I'm looking to come for any champion. You know, I already called out two champions on the States. Sonny Edwards is out here. He's a great fighter. That's someone I might want to, I actually want to fight. He fights at 112. I'm a 115 pounder, but that, that's, that's, a, that's a fight in the future for sure. We would love to see you versus Sonny Edwards. Because that's not, that's not just boxing, that's entertainment as well. So we want to see it. And very quickly, anything else on the undercard that you're looking forward to? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking, Salt Poppy, he's a... Uh, and great entertainer, and he could fight. He could fight, you know? Don't be surprised. You might see some type of skills up in there. I, I've seen them. I, I've seen them in the back. I've seen them in the gym, and they got something. They got, they got, they got something coming. So I certainly do have something. Oh, thank you so much for coming. Good luck as well in November. And look, we've heard from him. Let's hear from the guys that are going to do it on Saturday night. They're with Wade Plemons. Let's join this press conference. It's so stupid. It's ridiculous. It's like a stupid yeah. You love the game, though, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Play violin. Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are in London for the biggest in crossover boxing, presented by DAZN and Misfits Boxing, live on DAZN pay-per-view this Saturday night from the O2 Arena, the X-Series number one. And on stage with me, I have our entire card, fighters and the men that make this all possible behind the scenes. And that's where we're going to start here today. KSI, Calais Sauerland, and Mams Taylor. KSI, let's start with you. Mm -hmm. You're the main event. Yeah. You're also the man behind this entire event. Uh-huh. Talk to me about the beginnings of Misfits Boxing and what it means to be here today live. Um, well, I mean, obviously this is awesome to see all these YouTubers and influencers, et cetera, come through together for this amazing moment, the first Misfits Boxing ever uh, event done. Um, for me, it was all about making sure everyone wins. It's all about making sure everyone is included. Um, this wasn't about everything just being focused on me. This wasn't just about me being the main guy and you know having all the clout, having all the glory. It was making sure I share it with everyone and making sure everyone is also winning when it comes to the scene. This boxing scene, when it comes to the YouTube boxing scene, has been growing, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, it started out with people like Joe Weller and Theo Baker. And then I went from there to fight Joe Weller and then obviously call out Logan. And then Logan has done this thing with Mayweather and uh, Jake Paul obviously has done this thing as well. But for me, you know, I saw, like, there was a lot of bad in the YouTube boxing scene that needed to be cleaned up. And uh, me, Mam, Sal and Robbers have all decided, yeah, we're going to make this <laughs> legit. We're going to make this proper. We're going to make everyone win. We're going to pay everyone. We're going to pay everyone. <laughs> We're going to pay oh, everyone. <laughs> you know, like everyone's going to get what they deserve. You know, everyone works hard. And, yeah, it's going to be a great event, good boxing fights. And it's going to be exciting all the whole way through. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, not only, obviously, do we have Misfits Boxing, created from the ground up by both you and the two presidents on stage with us, Calais and Mams, but also we have the Zone in partnership, and that's live on pay-per-view. KSI, talk to me about the partnership with the Zone 
and your vision going forward with Misfits and DAZN in partnership? Well, with DAZN, you know, we, we, you know, we talked and they felt like the right fit for uh, this, this whole scene. Um, you know, they believed in us when it came to... They believed in us when it came to uh, the KSI Logan uh, Paul two fight, so we thought, okay, cool, let's uh, let's work with them again, uh, and let's do more than just one event. Let's do multiple events. So this is going to be the first of many. Uh, you know, we're looking to do another, I believe, in October, another in November, and uh, another in January or December. We're still deciding, but uh, yeah, we want this to be a thing that is constantly happening because we see that this scene is growing at a fast, rapid rate. And uh, we want to make sure like the people in, who are in control are making sure that it's good for everyone rather than it just being focused on one person. So, you know, you're going to get me putting on my Eddie Hearn hat, <laughs> promoting fights as well, and uh, making sure everyone gets what they deserve. Uh, money-wise or cloud-wise, et cetera. So, yeah. So Misfits Boxing leading the way with the zone. And speaking of promotion, we have a man on stage that is an expert in the pro boxing scene promotion. Callie Sutherland, I wanted to talk to you about transitioning to the crossover boxing because you are an expert in this promotion. How has it been transitioning to now the influencer side of things and how are you getting along with that? Woo! Welcome to London, people. Um, listen, man, this is all about a ride. And uh, Misfits, I love the name. Um, can't, can't take credibility. That goes to JJ and Mams. But, you know, 20... I'm 45, by the way, so a little bit older than the gentleman up here today. But 20 years ago, I had a milestone in my life. I did my first heavyweight world championship with Evander Holyfield. 20 years later, I'm sitting here promoted world championship boxing all over the world, the World Boxing Super Series, unified divisions, created heavyweight champions, Klitschko, Hay, etc. But this Monday, when I woke up, people, I tell you something, I have never had such a buzz. Going in a fight week, I didn't know what to expect. I'm sitting in the hotel Monday, which I basically never do. I'm going to Mams, is that him? Is that him? <laughs> and I'm just buzzing on the whole vibe. But one thing... I'll tell you, that is exactly the same between classic boxing and the crossover boxing, is the hunger up here. The way these guys have prepared, I am shocked. The level of professionalism is second to none. So no more bullshit that these guys are up here for big paydays. Man, these guys are superstars in their own segments. What the... F Excuse the language, I know it's still... <laughs> still, still, still be beyond the, but before the watershed of, uh, of me being allowed to swear like that. But, you know, there's a lot of criticism. Are they taking money away from the sport? They're injecting money in the sport. They're bringing fresh eyeballs to the sport. This is properly matched. It's a platform. Like, like KSI said, they're going to get paid. They're going to get the best platform. And this is the biggest crossover event yet. That is fact. And we're going to go on from here, October, November, January. It's not a one-stop shop. We're starting with a bang. We have a sold-out O2 on Saturday night. A sold-out O2 on Saturday night in our first event. That's the way we do things. Big, big, and bigger. Thank you very much. And I'd like to get a word from you as well, another president of Misfit Boxing. And we talked about the promotion on the pro side. You are the expert in the influencer side, the perfect blend of what we're bringing with Misfits Boxing into Zone. Talk to me about getting this card together and the sustainability of now being in the fight game. We all see it now, right? The, the unfortunate things that happen as well as being able to push through all of that. Talk to me about the journey to make this card happen and the future after this one. I don't think anyone's an expert in the influencer space, <laughs> to be honest with you. It keeps evolving at such a rapid pace. And I think, um, I think the main thing is that you've got to be quick to react, be prepared for anything. And, um, and you know, it's such, a, it's such an amazing thing to be able to give a platform that's taken seriously because these guys are training very seriously. But at the same time, we're not, 
attempting in any way to encroach on classical boxing. We're creating our own space. And like Calla said, I think it's only going to seep into boxing in a positive way because how many people look up to KSI and, and all the guys up here right now? These kids are influenced by them, seeing them box, seeing them make transformations of their minds, their bodies on a regular basis. They're influenced and suddenly they're like, I want to go to boxing class. I want to learn how to box. And whether they're going to become classical boxers or influencers who do boxing, it's still a positive route. You've got more eyeballs uh, on the sport of boxing in general because the kids who are watching this, there's definitely a, a crossover element of how many of them are like, suddenly they're interested in watching Canelo. And they might not have known them before. Seriously, they don't. They watch YouTube, they watch these guys. They're like, this is exciting. I want to learn more about this sport. So I don't think in any way we are presenting anything negative. We've got our own space here, and it's developing and it's growing. And, you know, i um, very proud to be uh, partners with KSI leading, leading this and, uh, and with Kala with his experience and with the zone. Couldn't be a better match for all of us. So we're really excited. Ladies and gentlemen, one quickly, more round. I'm going to say one, one, one quick, very special mention, because this man, I, pr I did my first event with him 25 years ago. He's flown in straight from the Uzik Joshua fight. He's announced every single major fight that I grew up with as a kid, as a promoter, and has literally left a stamp on the sport that no one will ever leave. Mr. Michael Buffer. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you've heard from the men behind the scenes. Now, let's talk to the men in the ring. We are going to start with one of our first fights on the card, and that is between Evil Hero and Dean the Great. Evil Hero, we'll start with you. It's your first time fighting in the UK? Yes, that's true. And also, your first fight as a pro? That is true as well. Talk to me about your amateur experience. You do have some as well. And what it means to be on this card with the eyeballs on this card and the opponent across from you being probably one of the most dangerous men in this scene. Why Dean the Great? Uh, let's start off from the beginning. Uh, amateur. I really didn't do amateur, but I did uh, two fights, one with celebrity boxing and one with BKFC. Um, those were fun and just not as professional as this. This one is just on a whole different level. As of Dean, uh, I guess nobody wanted to fight him. I don't know why. Um, he doesn't have any real fights. Like, there's not any real fights. He says... You know why. A, huh? You know Oh, why. he's talking up. Oh, shut up. Um, he doesn't have any fights or anything like that, so he's never, like, knocked anybody out. I've seen him drop people with body shots, so, I mean, he says he's going to knock me out. Yeah, you're next. I mean, I'm next. Okay. Let's see on Saturday. We'll see. We'll see. You're just part of the hit list. Man, now, shut fi finish up. The, finish the question. Do you even finish all the questions he asked you? Yeah, because you're being rude. Finish. <laughs> Son. Nah, I'm straight. <laughs> so, Dean, talk to me. He says you've never had any real fights that you've only knocked guys out in the street, but you are one of the guys that a lot of people look at here as a prospect in this crossover boxing scene. How is this fight going on Saturday, and do you respect that opponent over there? Uh, no, respect is earned. One thing I will say, he do got some balls to get in the ring with me, um, but he's obviously not very wise. I mean, just look at him, he's a goofy. Um, but first I want to start by saying I appreciate Misfits for giving me this opportunity and Happy Punch for getting me on this stage. Blah, 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 um, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, and it's a blessing to be here, especially on this caliber of a stage, especially for me going from street fighting and whooping ass on the streets, beating up on cops, three people at once. Um, I'm sure he's seen, he's a fan, he's been a fan, he's been commenting on my videos and stuff, but, <laughs> um, it's a blessing to be here, bro, so Saturday night, I'm gonna play with him, I wanna showcase my skills, because if I just go in there and knock him out, it's, nobody's gonna, nobody's who really you, gonna wanna fight me, Who have you knocked out? Let, let daddy talk. Have you so if I just go in there and knock him out, nobody's really going to want to fight me then. So I got to showcase my skills first round, second round, I'm going to get we'll him out of there. see. Evil here, I want to come back to you. You're now with Brickhouse Boxing in Los Angeles. Yeah. Talk to me about the experience working with Brian Valoria, legendary coach. I want to hear more about your time there. Oh, it's a game changer for me. Um, I wish I found him earlier. 
I've only been with them shortly, but we've made a lot of progress. I mean, a lot of progress and working with like countless pros. Bro, it don't matter who you worked with. All undefeated, people that will sleep you in four nope, seconds. Nobody you, nobody's worked with can, can F with me, bro. Okay, why don't you ask I'm Scrappy different. Ramirez? I'm different. I'm a madman. Yeah, yeah, different. I'm different. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a madman. Nothing. Shh. Go to Brick House and let's see you spar there. Well, Dean, you have experience as well with Jackrabbit Boxing in Long Beach. Talk Jack- to me about I, your I, team out there. I got the best gym in the country at Jackrabbit, bro. Stop. Talk about your time at Jackrabbit, Dean. Jackrabbit's been amazing, bro. We got prospects like Ashton, um, signed to Jake Paul. Uh, he's doing his thing, 8 0, 8 KOs. Upcoming, he'll be the next world champion of the world. And uh, obviously, I'm next. After I make my statement with this goofy, knock him out. I actually got him a gift, if you guys don't mind. Um, Oh, you got me a pillow? Yeah, I got you a pillow with your name on it. <laughs> I got you a pillow, too. Yeah, let, me, let me go ahead and... Uh, Can you please bring it to me? <laughs> oh, that's whack. You couldn't afford a better one? <laughs> what? You got a what? pillow. You got a pillow. I'll be in a blanket. Smile. Easy. That was... <laughs> Don't touch me, dog. I'm going to lay it off. Don't that's a cute Folks, you cute can see the intensity in both fighters here. Ah, Evil, I'll come back to you. He had the, now that, uh, now that we are seeing from the, the intensity level rise, Evil, <laughs> talk to me about now that you're seeing this in person, your plan for Saturday night. He's touching you. He's coming over and getting in your face. Well, it's funny because where was all this energy when we seen each other in the hotel? He didn't look was, at me. He didn't speak to me. He didn't do shit. Now he has ran. cameras in front of him. See, he's acting all me, tough. He ran in the elevator. Who? What? Ooh. You heard Ooh. me. What'd you, I didn't I'm hear like you. dumb now. I, I didn't hear you. see me, you ran in the elevator. Go for Dean, give me your when? final. When? Final words. Um, shit up? Like I said, it's a blessing to be here. August 27th. August 27th. Um, I'm going to steal the show. Even though uh, KSI, he's fighting two opponents. That, that in itself is legendary. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm here to steal the show. And, and uh, I, might, I might get him up out of there with a body shot, make him shit himself. But uh-huh. he gonna shit, I'm sure he's shitting himself right now. So we'll see about that. that on Saturday. But August, like I said, August 27th, I'm going to um, steal the show. I know it's my first time being on this big caliber of a stage, but, and a lot of people. Probably the last. Shut up, let me well, finish. Let me finish. Let how does daddy it feel talk. to be interrupted? You're going to have your time, son. Let daddy talk. Like I was saying, until like, I really oh, interrupted. Boo-hoo, um, boo-hoo. On this big caliber of a stage, big caliber of a stage that I'm on, a lot of people are saying that I might, I might freeze up or this, that, and the third. What do diamonds do when they get under them lights, they shine? You dig what I'm saying? That's what I'm here for. I'm here to sign because I'm a star. And y'all going to see August 27th. I'm still the show on my mama. He said it. He said it. Out of fight. Well, there it is, folks. We'll save the rest for Saturday. And again, we knew that language was going to come out, obviously. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's move to that second fight. And that is I am Thompson and Sam Hyde. Two heavyweights going at it in this fight. I am Thompson. We'll go to you. You're at Wild Card Boxing in Los Angeles, preparing for, quite frankly, a monster. Tell That's me right. what the preparation has been like for the Candyman. It's been a lot of hard work in the gym, a lot of hours. It's been a, it's been a good fucking time at Wild Card. I love that gym. I think um, on Saturday night, one, one thing I can promise for sure is like we're two big guys, around 260 pounds. We're both going to hit hard, so it's going to be a show. That's for sure. Sam, I'll come to you. I don't actually know how to describe your training methods, how to describe much about the way you prepare for this fight, other than to say you're a man ready. Talk to me about this fight, Sam, and what you're going to do to this man on Saturday night. Oh, I, Donnick, have you heard much Irish folklore? I haven't heard a lot, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. When you were a wee lad growing up in Ireland and you looked out and you saw the green grass and the blue sky, did they ever teach you any of the old songs from the old days? They didn't, but go ahead and teach me one. I'd love to hear one. Well, I was going to anyway. <laughs> it's called The Death of Dol Rye. It goes like this. I told you once, I told you twice. The candy man, he don't play nice. Men from Ireland, we don't back down. We'll turn your smile into a frown. Jump for joy and come, my friends, to the pot of gold at Rainbow's End. True Irish remember the tale of William Wallace, the first alpha male. <laughs> His ghost of the isle fights by my side. It is to him to whom I confide. Tee hee hee, the candy man sees. <laughs> it's font small. 
all possible futures that now could be. Sugar me biscuits dollop the eyes. Candyman speaketh with buttered up pride. Caramel gloves cut for skin of lies when Candyman sweeten the death of Dorai. Did you get that? Wait. I, that's how I translate for you, Wade. You got I translate. don't think I can translate that one for you, but I assume that was a message of fear, intimidation, and he's bringing it in on Saturday. And regardless of that, that, uh, that story. I mean, all, all I know is like when you have two big guys on stage, it's a fun fucking time, you know? Absolutely. So it's going to be a fun fucking time. You never know what's going to happen, and we're going to bring it. I am Thompson. I want a prediction for this fight. Really, you know, it's your first time on this big of a stage. But again, heavyweights, one shot can end this thing. What are you seeing happening on Saturday night? How do you get this done? I'm just going to go out there. I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to swing, keep up the energy, and then knock out Sam in the second round. Let's go to Sam Hyde. How do we get this fight done in your best riddle possible? Well, lad, when you were growing up in Ireland and you looked out and you saw the sweet maidens in their dresses dancing their Irish dances, <laughs> did you ever hear, perhaps, the Candyman's song? <laughs> no. Candy for me well, it goes that. like this. <laughs> sweet sugary adversaries are perfect for the munching. With a hankering for confectionaries, my fists are hungry for punching. I weave my cotton candy web, and you fall into my trap. Procure my bib and dessert fork, so that I may begin to snack. Should I crunch him now, or shall I savor every lick? I could punish him slowly, or dip and sprinkle him quick. First I'll gingerly ginger snap his candy-coated pretzel arms in half. Then I'll buttery pop gumdrop smack him to the chocolatey canvas with a slap. In the marshmallow ring, the ropes look like Twizzlers. Body shots to my jelly belly merely give me a snicker. <laughs> Cookie cups and candy canes, sugar plums galore. The candy man with sour patch fists will knock you clean to the floor. I'll pumpkin crumb cream crunch punch his powder donut head until the juniper belly jelly jam comes tumble bumble squeezing out of his neck. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough. Let's move on to our next fight. And that is Andy Worski versus Salt Poppy. Andy, we'll start with you. You're representing Canada in this fight. Yeah. Talk to me about that, man. You're the only person on stage representing Canada. I want to hear more about not only being in this event, but what it means to represent your country here. Nah, screw Canada. I'm going to bend you over, Salt Poppy, and no one will fucking stop me. You understand me? I'm the underdog, bro. You don't even know what you stepped into, bro. You don't even know. <laughs> Salt Poppy, some strong words over there. Any, uh, any oh, response? First of all, I'd like to thank um, God, my team, my brothers, and my dad for training me for this event, and my coach. Oh. I'd like um, to thank Happy Punch Promotions and Misfit Boxing, KSI, for giving me this opportunity. Um, I'm very happy to be here. And for, um, I'd like to thank Andy Worski as well for taking this fight. Respect. Yeah, respect for that. And um, he can talk as much as he wants, um, but I let my hands do the talking in the ring, like, like I did. I can't wait. I can't wait. I've been like... Honestly, my dreams are just us fighting constantly. I can't wait. To, oh, let's go, bro. Let's go. And here's the thing is, he's been trained by his, his brother, his, his dad, all this stuff. I literally, like, I could have walked in here and been like, oh, okay, I'm going to just, like, uh, uh, do my best, do my best. No, I, I actually trained with some of the best pros in Canada. Uh, I dropped tons of money, tons of time, three to five hours a day, five days a week to actually train with real boxers. I'm not coming in here to, like, have fun. I'm coming, in, like, in here to murder you, bro. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to do, bro. <laughs> so, Pop, you've said this fight shouldn't go past the second round. You should finish this fight. Are you, is there an element of surprise that you're worried about with Andy, right? We haven't seen a lot from him. 
I've lost 10 kg for this fight to happen. My stamina, I feel more conditioned. I'm going to take him out in the first round. Oh, yeah? This guy DM'd me, and he's like, may I see some sparring footage? I'm like, what? <laughs> Let's go. No, 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 dude. First round? Really? First round? Yeah, that's my plan. Buddy, come on, bro. Not even close. What are you doing? What are you doing? First round will be fun. Once you feel my power, I don't want to see you running. Wait. I don't want to see you running away. I can't away. fucking wait, bro. Bro, I cannot wait. I train with like 220-pound, six-foot-three guys literally crossing me in the face, and I take those punches. You better hit harder than them because if you don't, you're done, bro. I'll just say that much. Well, Andy, let's get a final word from you, Andy. You are perceived to be the underdog here, right? You are stepping in with a guy that a lot of people did not want to fight. How do you go in and do what you say? Shock the world. Stop this, man. What is the plan? It was basically just work as hard. as You, you have to work hard. That's it. And it's not only about the physical, it's about the mental, too. And I'm, I'm ready. I, I want this. I don't think Salt Poppy has the, the mentality that I have right now. I need this. And I want to say, this is crazy that I'm fucking even here, <laughs> first of all. And um, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to shock the world. No one thinks I will win. And to all the haters out there, all Salt Poppy fans, you're going to see. You're going to, oh, he's, oh, he's not just wait till Saturday, please. Thank you. Appreciate Salt it. Salt Poppy, a final word? Um, I just wish him a speedy recovery. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, folks, let's move on to our next fight. Both men sitting side by side in the front row. Faye Sensei versus King Kenny. Kenny, we'll start with you. <laughs> There's Nico in the crowd, NDL stand up. Kenny, talk to me about the decision to take this fight. I think it's well known that Faye Sensei is a guy that a lot of people perceive to be a high level boxer, martial artist. And yeah. this is a challenge that you were willing to accept when really not anyone else was. Talk to me about that decision and the preparation behind it. So, yeah, obviously, storyline, because I thought a Faye's member before, I thought it'd be pretty cool to continue the storyline. And, you know, Faye's. Uh, sensei, he's good, but I'm better. But I do like a challenge. I don't want to go in there with anyone who can't fight, so I think it's going to be a good fight. Absolutely. Slim, uh, excuse me. Faye <laughs> Sensei. Slim, I was thinking about you, really. <laughs> Faye slow, Sensei. You hear those words of respect, but also intensity. Yes. What's on your mind when you think King Kenny in the ring on Saturday night? The storyline is great. I'm just excited to be here. You know, thank you to KSI and Misfits for giving me the opportunity. Thank you to Happy Punch and Keem uh, for doing the work behind the scenes also for getting me this opportunity. You know, I just saw in my Facebook memories that I fought four years ago on the first one um, against Overflow. So to be here uh, again, I feels like I'm on home base fighting in front of the UK fans. I know the majority of my fans who watch my YouTube videos are from the UK. So just to get an opportunity to perform again in front of uh, my fans, uh, it's just, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Kenny, I want to ask what it means to, to not only be on this card, but also to be training with your brother, Daily Perales, with Deji in the gym. This is a moment, it feels like, for everyone in that gym to make that next step. Talk to me about the level of intensity that has been provided in this camp versus the last one, working with your brother. So, yeah, obviously, for my last camp, it was pretty hard to, to figure out what stance he was coming out as because they were, he was switching a lot. So, uh, for this camp, we know what we're coming up against. The preparation has been easier, but spars has been more tough because, obviously, uh, the opponent has leveled up. Sensei, the same to you. What has the preparation for Kenny been like? You've seen him now in yep. a fight with FaZe Temper previously, but now you're stepping in with him. What do you see that not only concerns you, but it's something you have to be prepared for when facing King Kenny. Uh, to be honest, the focus for me has just been myself personally and getting myself in shape uh, and ready for a boxing match, not thinking about who my opponent is. You know, things change all the time. So just preparing for a boxing match. I've done MMA, I've done kickboxing. Uh, so just making sure that I'm ready for a boxing match with whoever that is, um, whether just like if I'm just like a regular old amateur, I'm getting ready for an amateur debut or whatever it may be, a pro debut. 
I've just been preparing like a boxer, so I'm ready for anything. Kenny, I'm going to finish up here with you. Since they said he wants a war, not a pro boxing match, he wants to go in and bleed. I'm ready for that. I'm going to be ready for that this Saturday. How do you get this fight done with that mentality now and face since they coming for your head? How do I get it done? Fighting and winning. We're going to go to war. A knockout could happen in round one, two, three, or four. This is boxing. If you're going to war, a knockout is most likely going to happen. I'm wearing 10 ounce gloves, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's going to be good. Sensei, final word. You're going to war. How does this thing bring back home to the United States and the FaZe Clan camp? Hopefully for the fans, it, it, it's a four-round war. I mean, pr again, personally, I want to perform. I want to put on uh, a great show for everybody, so I don't want to stay on the back foot or uh, feel like I left anything out in the ring. This could be my last fight, so just for the opportunity to get out there and perform, I want to leave it all out there. Respect. Now, folks, our next fight is a pretty heated rivalry, one that's gone on for years now. But we're finally here, finally about to step in. The talk is done, and of course I'm talking about Fuzi versus Deji. Now, Fuzi, we'll start with you. It's been three years since you've been in this ring, and this is your return to the crossover boxing scene. I want to ask you just your, your feelings, your mindset, stepping in there now for the first time in a while. First of all, I want to let everybody know that for the last 11 years, you've known me as Fusi. My name is Yusuf Arakat. That's my birth name, and that's what I go by. I'd like to thank God for this opportunity. I'd like to thank Happy Punch and my partner, Keemstar. Happy for all the Happy Punch fighters on this stage tonight and going to be on the stage Saturday night. And thank you for Misfits Boxing, JJ and Mams, for this opportunity. Three years ago, I went into the ring with an ego. I thought because I had 10 million subscribers, that means I must be good at boxing because I, you know, people made me feel like I was a star. I got humbled. I got humbled in a very bad way. Had it not been for my nose being broken and requiring two surgeries to fix, I had told myself I would never step in the boxing ring again. As time went on, as I got older, it didn't sit well with me. I didn't like that the first time that I went into the ring, I didn't get to showcase who I am. Life has hit me so much harder than any of the punches that fight has ever thrown on me, and I haven't stopped. I haven't quit. I don't know how to quit. I keep fighting. So I called my nose doctor. Hey, I'm thinking of getting in the ring again. He said, absolutely not. One touch and it's done. I said, cool. It's worth it. And here I am again to do it all over again, and I'm ready for what the challenge, you know, ready for the challenge, ready for the opportunity, grateful for the opportunity, and ready to show everybody who Yusuf is and who the wolf has become. As you hear those words, a very focused individual across the table from you, but also this is a massive fight for you as well. Coming back into the ring, Talk to me about this moment for you. Yeah, likewise, I want to thank my team. Honestly, thank you, JJ, as well, for uh, this opportunity because I, I love the sport. Um, listening to Fuzi, yeah, I mean, yeah, he is focused, but I mean, I'm prepared. Simple as that. Yusuf, you said that Deji has really never had to face adversity like you have, and you just talked about a lot of that adversity right now. Do you think that's going to factor into this fight in any way? And if so, how do you take advantage? 100%. You know, the struggles that I've been through at my age, I don't think he's seen. Struggles are all different. We all fight our own battles. But I think what I've gone through, I'm ready for the war that's going to happen in the ring because I've, I've been through the war within myself. I've handled my own demons. I've got through the, you know, the, the depths of bottomless hell. I've you know, looked through the mirror and not wanting to see another day and continued. So yeah, I think it's different. Deji, you hear those words from Yusuf? You know, like I said, this is a win, a must-win situation for both of you guys. How has this camp been different from previous ones, a full camp with Daily Paralysis? getting ready for a man that is absolutely going to come in and try to steamroll. How do you handle that? Um, so for my last fight, I didn't really have enough time with Daly. But with this, with this camp, I've been with Daly since the beginning. And he's been doing amazing for me. I have uh, the best PT in the game. I've got Leon. Like, uh, 
Yeah, come on. <laughs> Shout out Leon, Leon Wills. So, yeah, and uh, I've also got my, uh, my childhood friend with me, Shane. Like, he's been there from the beginning. He's there. Like, uh, <laughs> he's right there. So, um, yeah, with this camp, it's just been, I don't know, I've just been... Well, you can see it. I can see there's just a different vibe with you. You're, yeah. you're mentally locked in, but you're not trying to be anything you're not this time around. It seems like you are fully realizing who you are, not only as a person, but as a boxer. Yeah. But I do need to know this intensity is going to rise, and it already has. Yeah. When we get to fight night, how do you get Fousey out of there? How do you finish this fight and not only reward those fans that have believed in you for so long, but reward yourself? Finally be able to say, you know what? I did what I prepared to do and take this home as W. So, um, for the longest time, I guess since the uh, Jake Paul fight, I've, I haven't really been fighting for myself, but now I've, I'm now fighting for myself and seeing like what I can do, developing and everything. So, I guess you'll just see Saturday. Fuzi, this is the comeback story. How do you write your finish and get this W? It is a comeback story and I'm not a character in Deji's story. He's a character in mine. And, you know, this is, this is Fousey's final act on the social media scene, YouTube scene, ready to take my career on as Yusuf. But before I go, I, I have to say thank you so much to Jack Rabbit Boxing. Thank you, for, thank you for Coach Ivan, Coach Danny, Coach Zoe, Eric. Thank you, Ashton, H2O Silve. Thank you, Alex. And I got to give a big shout out to everybody back in Long Beach. Shout out Sincere. Shout out um, Javion. And yeah, I love my brothers. Shout out Hess. And yeah, I'm just excited. There it is, folks. Give it up for Deji Fuzi. Now then, our co-main event of the evening. We have Slim versus phase temper and i've gotten very familiar with this matchup from last night we had some some rumbling going on in a face-to-face -face. slim talk to me about you coming in on two or three weeks notice you're coming in against a very difficult opponent you're taking that challenge what happens on fight night yeah so um i stepped in uh First thing I want to say, uh, you know, alhamdulillah for this opportunity, you know, like I've been through so much shit these past couple of years. Like if you guys have been following my journey, this whole YouTube boxing journey, I, I never fought on like a, a mainstream card, a KSI card, a Logan Paul card, a Jake Paul. I never got to fight on a mainstream card. So I've been fighting on these little small cards and I made a name for myself. And, um, uh, you know, like so much shit has happened to me and every time like negative things happen, I always like, you know, I always believe in God's plan. I always woke up with a smile on my face no matter how difficult the situation was, I was, you know what, I know, I know Allah has a better plan for me, I know, and when I got that phone call from Mams Taylor to take this fight with Face Temper, I know, I know it's destiny, and I know it's going to be destiny on Saturday night when I come in and knock his head off. <laughs> Temper, you've heard Slim basically all week, he has been jabbering all week to you, is any of that in your head, is that all noise to you, what do you think when you, when you look at Slim and he's saying all these things to you? First of all, I want to thank God, my family. I want to thank my coach, my team, my FaZe family, everybody for getting me here. I want to thank JJ for paving the way with this whole YouTube boxing. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity. Thank you to Misfits. Um, and uh, as far as, uh, as, far as well, what was the question? Can you repeat that? Slim, just continuing to try to talk, continuing to try to get in your head. Is that affecting you at all? No, that's not affecting me whatsoever. I've been, I've been training. I've been preparing for this for, for a long time now. Um, and it, it's, really, it's really me versus me. Uh, as Fuzi said, you know, Slim is, in, Slim is just, it's going to be easy, slight work, once we get in the ring. Absolutely. Slim, you said that uh, temper 6-4 for nothing. You said that he keeps his chin high in his defense. You see a lot of holes in his game. How do you execute? I mean, I'm just I'm messing around. I think he's very talented. Like, you know, he's very talented at putting things on shelves and stuff. But, um, yeah, um, I, I think, like, you know, like, he's – on Saturday night, I'm going to make a huge statement. I'm an underdog in this fight. A lot of people see me as a frail, skinny guy, but I, I know what I bring to the table. My last fight was 10 months ago, and I feel like if I fought myself 10 months ago, I would knock myself out. That's how much I've elevated my game. And I feel like if you want to elevate yourself in boxing, 
you got to be obsessed with it. Like, you got to be obsessed. You can't just, you know, when I have a fight, I'm going to go on camo. You got to love it. You got to watch it. I watch fights from world-class fighters to regular street fights, you know. So when I see these regular amateurs fight, I see what they do wrong compared to, like, these world-class fighters. So I actually study the game. I'm a student of the game. I love it. I love it so much. I'm not just doing it for, like, the clout and the hype. I actually love it, man. I've always been a big fan of boxing. So uh, the fact that I'm here right now, it's, I'm really grateful. But Saturday night, yo, Tommy boy, let's put this in Call of Duty terms. Yo, Tommy boy, I'm bringing my Tommy boy. And on Saturday night, I'm going to strip for y'all right now. I'm going to be Ebu Faze. Ebu Faze in the building, boy. If, for the non-Arabs in the building, Ebu Faze means father of. So I'm going to be the father of Faze, basically. Thank you very yo, much. Slim, I just want to remind you the reason you're here today is because I chose you to be here. What? I, I literally chose you, know you to be here, bro. You chose me to be here? Yeah. No, you didn't, bro. My last fight, literally, I was supposed to fight him on, on, on social knockout too, my third fight, right? Uh, he didn't want to cut, uh, cut down to my weight, so I ended up fighting some other dude. And then he was telling everybody, yo, Slim is ducking me, Slim is ducking me, yo. So you know what I did? After I knocked out my last opponent, I put him to sleep. The hospital came and everything. Like, he was out for like 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, that's serious. I could watch the clip, bro. You know what I'm saying? I literally called him out. This is what I said. You can see it. I said, face temper. Where you at, boy? And Mam Taylor was calling me who you want to fight. I said, give me face temper. Everybody that contacted me, I'm like, oh, give me face temper. Give me face temper. If I didn't take this opportunity, he would never, ever want to fight me, bro. He would never want to fight me, bro. So he, he has the two-week advantage. No strength and conditioning. No nothing, bro. I'm, not do I'm coming in. I know when it comes to straight boxing ability, I'm way better than him. I got better technique than you. I'm faster than you. I have better footwork than you. All you is is six foot four. That's it. You six foot four for nothing. You six foot four to put shit on shelves. That's it. That's what I think. Yo, you could have a full camp, and you still wouldn't. Nah, 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 nah. You could have a nah, full nah, camp, nah, bro. Nah, 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 nah. Well, there it is, folks. As you can see, plenty of beef here on stage, but also beef coming up on September 17th. Canelo, Triple G live on DAZN pay-per-view. You've seen the undercard. And before we get to our main events, two of those, I'm going to throw it to Addy with DAZN, and we will be right back. Y la gente empieza a gritar Canelo, el nombre de Canelo, algo increíble. I remember hearing that there's a new guy from Mexico touted to be a great. The crowd is electrified. This kid loves him. You just don't fight Floyd Mayweather at that age. Why would you do that? Y pues al final de cuentas yo quiero hacer historia. Ahí está, mira el golpe. Ese. Ese fue un golpe muy importante en la pelea. The two Triple G fights were two absolute wars, two epics. That jab opened up a cut on the eyebrow of Canelo. That second fight was for all the marbles. Sentí como si me pegaran con algo de, 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 de hierro, de metal. It's over! Dicen que para toda acción hay una reacción y esa fue mi reacción. Super fights. This is one of them. Both men are firing what they've got. This is a draw. There has to be a rematch. And new. There's a score to seven. There's real bad blood here. Everybody wants to fight, right? He took another chance. I don't want talking with him. I want to fight. Big one, isn't it? Canelo versus Triple G. We're joined by Kugan Cassius from IFL TV. Looking forward to that one? Do you know what? I just see the promo for it come up, and I was like, that's creeping around very quickly. Creeping around very quickly, so uh, mm. yeah, I think once uh, that draw is a couple of weeks away, it's huge. It almost feels like, not that we're forgetting it because we clearly aren't, because there's been so many big fights after big fights. Look, me and you were in Saudi Arabia for Alexander Usyk versus AJ. Another big one now. We got another big one, and that's a really big one. And a lot of people didn't want it. Now everyone's desperate for it. Yeah, I think after what happened with Canelo and Bivol, I think the next best option from a fight perspective, we want to see Canelo fight Bivol at some point. Yeah. But I think 
you know, in the interim, we know kind of Bivol's got other plans as well. But I think we'd still take it. And I think that's what, you know, the fans got to realise that this is going to be, like, I know it's a, a few years on from kind of their second fight. But, yeah, when that fight week comes, that's going to be huge. It's going to be huge indeed. Just to tell you what's going on behind us. Obviously, part one of the press conference is wrapped. Uh, they are now getting ready for part two of the press conference. We are going to see KSI. Pineda, we're going to see swarms all on stage there. You can see Kelly Salen and the great Michael Buffett. It was really nice to see Kelly Salen shout out Michael Buffett as well, who's been just the voice of the ring for so many years. We are seeing some new people come. David Diamante deserves a shout out, but Michael Buffett is Michael Buffett. Buffett's the man, isn't he? Look he is. at him. He looks immaculate. He looks better Still than looks me. Still looks better than me. He <laughs> yeah, looks better absolutely. than you. I don't know about me. But what is Kala wearing? We haven't I, even I'm not, I'm not that, quite sure if yeah. Kala thought that Look. a pink jacket would work in this weather. It actually works, actually. He pulls it off. He does, he but does. But Buffer, he? yeah, he's been doing this for so long, he must do it in his sleep, and, uh, yeah, fair play to him. How lucky for KSI to be called out by Michael Buffer this Saturday. You know how many fighters are desperate for that? That's their one dream, for Michael Buffer to say, let's get ready to rumble. KSI gets it on Saturday. Yeah, from a, like any boxer's perspective, I'm assuming that's your dream. You that's know, it, isn't it? To be, it. From a ring announcing perspective, yeah. I think that's your dream, isn't it? You want to be called out by Michael Buffer. You want to hear that, um, let's get ready to rumble. You want to hear that. That's when you've kind of not mm. made it, but that's a, no, that's a moment it. in your life. It's a moment. Absolutely. Honestly, it's a moment in your life indeed. What do you make of all this, Coogan? I mean, look, you, you've covered the scene since it right inception right i mean it's always done good numbers for you on ifl tv but there's always been that pushback from sort of real boxers about it these guys are all in shape they're talking smack are real boxers do you think starting to give them their respect now um i think it's still kind of 50 50 in terms of what you're talking about i think we saw kind of the most high profile event on on the zone three years ago when ksi fought logan paul and i think from that point onwards, it was kind of the start of a new era. I know this stuff has been going on before that, but that was kind of a start of a new era. I think the, where boxing fans possibly have a problem is where they combine the pros and yeah. cards like this, because on that card, you had Devin Haney and Billy Joe Billy Saunders, Saunders on the undercard. who was a, a two-weight world champion at the yeah. time. So I think boxing fans have a problem with that. When these fights are put on their own show. Almost separate. Separate. Yeah, that's what we're doing now with the X-Series. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's, it's a good idea. And again, it's going to appeal to a huge fan base um, of these guys because all these guys, their combined followers, must be ridiculous. ridiculous. Main, nearly as many as you. Well, nearly combine as as me you. and you, Addy. No, well. about that. <laughs> about that. But yeah, I think, listen, it's not going to be for everyone. Everyone's the hardcore boxing fans are always going to have their, their say. But I think events like this, when it's... This is kind of the cliche term of YouTube boxing. Mm. This is that card. Uh, you want to watch it? Watch it. I mean, but the combining of the two seems That's to be a little bit That's where the problem lies, I agree. And I can understand how sort of like real boxers get upset by it. Uh, KSI, obviously, main event, fighting two guys on the same night. That's mad. First be careful. Fight. It could go wrong in the first fight. He could be blowing out of his you-know-what in the first fight. Well, you don't know. I just did an interview with him actually about 20 minutes ago, and I said to him like, "It's quite mad that you're doing this." And he went, "Not, not really." And I said, "Well, okay." So the pro boxer element, uh, we saw this with Money Kicks yes. in um, yeah. in Saudi Arabia, who's a lovely kid, but opened the show in Jeddah, uh, didn't go to plan for it. Didn't go to plan at all. But I'm not saying this is going to happen here. But these guys that are coming in as the opponents as professional fighters are actually professional fighters. This is what they do for a living. Exactly. They don't do prime drinks. They don't do YouTube videos. He fights. No, and this and is their biggest Mexican. moment. This so he's is their tough. Biggest we know moment. he's tough. Yes. He's, um, it'd be interesting to see. Like I said, I think it's a bold move from KSI to fight two guys in one night. He's confident. He doesn't think it's a thing. Fair enough. Um, we'll see what Schwarms brings. But yeah. also, the, the professional boxer, uh, Pinada, let's see. Let's, let's see. see. Because... Again, like, uh, what's the word? Assumption is the mother of etc. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bleep, bleep, bleep. So, it um, KSI versus Jake Paul. That's what KSI said he's going to come yeah. back for. Look, I got a lot of stick when I said it's one of the biggest fights financially that can be made in boxing today. And people said, Ade, people tried to cancel me, Cougs. Like, Ade, you're turning into, you know what? I, I was like, see how that comment goes yeah, straight yeah, away yeah, on social yeah, media. Yeah. I was like, I'm telling you now, KSI versus Jake Paul is humongous. Back me up, please, Coogan. OK, so in terms of numbers, you're yeah, absolutely spot numbers, on. Yeah. But, I mean, look, we're not comparing it to Fury against Alexander Usyk no. or even AJ against uh, Tyson Fury. That Those fights are for kind of the history of the belts, etc., and kind of the legacy of, of British boxing and also... 
um, just worldwide boxing. But in terms of numbers, you're spot on. The numbers that KSI and Logan Paul would do, and sorry, oh, no. KSI and Jake Paul would do, yeah. people might not like to hear it, but they will literally break the internet for that, yeah. that week. <laughs> they, yeah, will. they will break the internet indeed. Look, talking of numbers, it doesn't get much bigger as well. October the 8th, member live on the zone pay-per-view. It is Chris Eubank Jr. versus Conor Ben. This one will bring in the numbers. I wonder who Conor Ben fights next. A lot of speculation about Yeah, Conor there's ben. a lot of options on the table. Furman, Whether Broner. Danny Garcia. Did he go maybe Avenisian European title shot? A lot of people have been asking about Keith that. Fight. Love it. Love the Ugas fight. <laughs> what Conor Ben does have is options. Conor ben needs a big fight. So who's next for Conor Ben? So who next for Conor Ben? Conor ben. For Conor ben. <laughs> I am my dad's son for the good and the bad. The biggest rivalry in British boxing history. If I'm waiting for as long as I'm waiting, it's big. Big fight. You know when we just talked about Jake Paul versus KSI breaking the internet? And it could happen. That broke the internet. Mate. That, it went mental. This fight, I was, talking, I was talking to Conor Ben about this the other day, right? And I said to him, mate, you don't realise how big this fight is. Yeah. What do you mean? What, is it that big? This is what Conor... Is, is that what he said? Like, is that what he said? He went, is it that big? I said, you won't understand it because you're in that bubble yeah. of being one of the fighters. But when you're on the outside, this fight here is literally insane. Yeah. The fact that Conor Ben is fighting Chris Eubank Jr. They've got this fight done for October the 8th, live on the zone, by the way. Live on the um, zone, mate, yeah. It, it's just crazy. I think when that fight comes around, you think of the, the press conference table. Nigel Ben, Chris Eubank Sr., the two sons, uh, Calla, Eddie. Eddie. It's just... It's insane. Mate, it's it literally, insane. it's almost like the Avenger world coming together. Mate, that's honestly, that week is going to be a peak moment. Whether people, again, there's people talking about the weight, et cetera, et cetera, about the, the two fighters mm -hmm. and kind of saying it's a bit of a fantasy matchup. It is a fantasy yeah, matchup. But, um, yeah, if their names are not Eubank and Ben, this doesn't happen. They don't meet at a catch weight. Yeah. But they are Eubank and Ben, so it's worth doing. Can I just say one thing? Go on. Are they starting us? I actually interviewed, when I knew this fight was happening, I interviewed Conor Ben on my, on my podcast, Raw the Fight With Him, is that right to plug? Um, and we were talking about, and I said to him, we couldn't talk about the fight coming up. So we did like an hour about his life, and it was, it was difficult, because all I was thinking while I was doing this uh, podcast with him was, this fight's getting announced next week, and we're not talking about it, because oh, it hadn't been signed. Yeah. But um, whatever way they got to it, they got to it. I think when that week comes around, we'll talk about GGG and Canelo. But when this fight comes around in oh. this country, yeah, it will literally stop still. It will stop still. That is That's the be kind a of fight moment. where it's on the front pages, not just the back pages. 100%. Everyone's talking about it. And like you say, if uh, Chris Eubank Sr. can get involved, obviously Nigel Ben's over here now training Conor Ben. If we get a face-off of those two, Take my money. You could do the face off on pay per view. Just saying. Don't 100%. do it, DeZone, but you can Oi, do the face take off. Take my money. Take my money. I'll sign now. <laughs> yeah. To watch a face off with, with all of them in there or, or yeah. even the dads in it. It's, it's, it's going to be insane. It will, it will be insane. Chris Eubank was out there in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I managed I'm to. like, when are you going to start training, Chris? It's like, uh, I told you, I day, 60%. I only need to be 60%. He actually thinks he only needs to be 60%. I interviewed him, I interviewed him an hour before uh, the main event for Joshua and, and Usyk, and I, I said to him, like, when are you going home? He said, oh, I might have a couple more days here. And then he said, actually, I'm not going to disrespect Conor Ben too much. I'm going to go home in the morning. But he had a couple of days. We know Chris Eubank, listen, his, his lifestyle is kind of, it didn't surprise me he yeah. was there. Um, but don't, don't read into that, because Chris Eubank kind of lives boxing, and so does Conor Ben, so... I can't wait for October. I'm going to wait indeed. Um, obviously, let's quickly touch on uh, what's going to happen on Saturday. Remember, it's live on the Zone pay per view. Make sure you scan the QR code. No more tickets, so you've got to scan the QR code if Sold you want to watch it. Sold out. Sold out. No, and again, Coogan can get tickets, though. Coogan's that kind of person, takes a head of boxing at the Zone and gets the ticket. Oh, wait, all my DMs, I can't get tickets for Connor Ben Eubank, and I can't get tickets yeah, yeah, for this either. Stop DMing stop me DMing. For, yeah, Eubank Ben, I can't get tickets for They don't even ask you anymore. They just say to you, Coog, get yeah. some tickets. Crazy. Uh, one man that definitely will be there on Saturday is Wade Plemons. He's going to kick off the second part of the press conference. Welcome back, folks. We are now here once again on behalf of DAZN and Misfits Boxing, live on DAZN pay-per-view from the O2 Arena on August 27th, this Saturday. And on stage with me now is our main event. That's right, two fights, one night for the man of the hour, KSI. Let's start with you. Mm -hmm. KSI, you're starting the night with Swarms. Yep. Ending the night with a professional boxer, mm -hmm. Luis Alcaraz Pineda. 
Talk to me about the mindset behind choosing two fighters in one night. All right, so with me fighting Swarms, I felt like it wasn't enough. I was like, all right, Swarms, he's like, he, I'll probably get rid of him in one round. What, what like, do you really think that? Yeah, well, I mean, you called me out and you were like, I'm going to smoke you. You're, you're, you're done, da-da, this, da-da, that. I was like, okay, sure. Anyway, once we get in that ring, you'll see. I'll, you're going to give me them eyes, them like... Bro, I've been in there for, for five minutes. Eyes. You haven't looked at me once in my eyes. Oh, no. We're not scared, bro. I'm scared. You're not scared. You ain't looked at me once, bro. Why are you smiling? <laughs> because I'm, this is smiling? hilarious. We'll see, bro. Watch. What do you mean, watch? <laughs> watch, bro. All right, anyway. What's this, Prime? Well. Fucking hell. Okay, bless. Oh, All right, calm. You're going to hit me up after be like, yo, can I have some more? No, I'm not. Anyway, um, so yeah, I thought, yeah, me fighting Swarms wasn't enough. And uh, I thought it was cute that he made a little diss track. Um, I watched it and I was like, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's good. It's the only good thing that you've done. Your fans loved it. In, in how, many, how many years, musically. Oh, okay. Um, and then I was like, all right, cool, let me switch it up and uh, fight two people in one night. So I was like, I want to fight uh, a pro boxer before Jake Paul does. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, I picked uh, Pineda, and uh, well, I didn't pick. I, he, he got chosen for me, and then I was just like, "All right, cool, let's go." And you then, did get your first top ten with me as well, with me on the hook. But anyways, carry on. Yeah, but I mean, with yeah, the, well, I mean, yeah, well, working out for you, but go on. Carry I think on. it was the second one. It was, you know, down like that. I hear you. But anyway, <laughs> swarms. You hear the words. He says he's gonna knock you out in one round. Get it out of the way. <laughs> He's got another fight to get to. Do you feel underestimated here? Bro, if he knocks me out first round, I'll delete Insta. I'll delete everything. No, oh, brother, sorry, don't bro. say that, ass. Literally. Don't say that, man. If you man. knock me out first round, <laughs> you think you're going to knock me out first round, bro? <laughs> bro, you got another thing coming, man. Uh, I'm not Wasabi, whatever his name is, or whoever that is, or what's that guy's name? Weller, whatever his name is? <laughs> bro, I don't even know who that is, but I'm not them guys, bro. Trust me. I come from two different backgrounds, bro. I'm telling you, watch. <laughs> No, no, I, I agree. Yes, you have come from a different background, obviously, um, compared to Joe Weather. Uh, <laughs> I think he was brought up in Brighton. But, um, yeah, like, when it comes to being in the ring, it's completely different, bro. You're going to swing for me and realize I'm not there, and then I'm going to just jab the fuck out of you. Bro, I've seen, I've seen your training team. They're, they're making you look good in the clips, bro. They're making you look good in the clips, bro. I, because I am good. Bro. Hit me, innit? Just hit me and you see what's I will! Yeah. You watch, you'll see, bro. You're gonna see, bro. 27th, we're all gonna see. How you, I... So what, you're gonna, wait, you're gonna knock me out first round? Yeah, I think I can if I wanted to. Do you wanna do a bit right now? What do you mean, if I wanna <laughs> bet... If... Do you wanna bet me right now? You wanna knock me out first nah, round? Nah, nah, I don't wanna play you know, these J-Paul games. Why, why, why did you not bet me for? Game. I'm confident right now you're not gonna knock me out. Be confident, the people are here, bro. I am gonna knock you out. All right, cool then, you're gonna knock me out, cool. cool. Do, <laughs> do you think you'll be able to last with me, bro? Bro, I've seen, obviously, maybe you've like, improved a bit. I've seen the way you swing, like, I've seen the way you swing with oh, the fight with Jake. I've seen the way you swing, bro. Bro, you haven't... You, Moving at two miles an yeah, hour. Yeah, yeah, You saw what you wanted me... I, I showed you what you wanted me to see, but, bro, <laughs> you'll see, bro, you'll see. I don't need to talk, innit? Let, let, let 27... No, 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 please Let 27 talk, didn't talk, talk him, man. So, have you, uh, how, uh, sparring, have you been sparring? No, I haven't been sparring. Okay, so how's your sparring going? You've been knocking people out. Ah, uh, no, I haven't been knocking no one out, bro. 27th. Don't worry about who I'm knocking out. I'm going to knock you out, bro. You're saying you're going to knock me out. I'm going to knock you out, bro. I'm going to take that bandana off your forehead as well, man. It will be off. Don't worry. Can I can't take it off now? with it. I can take it off now if you want. Oh, shit. Oh, oh my God. Ah, uh, you get wow. to see the shine, bro. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oof, no wonder why you wear the bandana. Wow. No, bro, it is what it is. But look, I'm going <laughs> to... Oh, his, forehead, his forehead looks nine months pregnant, isn't it? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Woo. Now, KSI, there's obviously beef between you and Swarms, but you do have another fight on the night. And again, a pro boxer sitting to your left. <laughs> Talk to me about not only the severity of what's going to happen on Saturday, but how serious this is fighting two people. And talk to me more specifically about Luis Alcaraz Pineda. All right, so the funny thing is, I actually thought uh, I was going to be fighting back-to-back. -back. So we've been training for me to fight back-to-back. -back. So I've been fighting, you know, sparring partners, you know, uh, two people fighting me while I'm, I'm there by myself, constantly fighting uh, different partners, in and out, in and out, different rounds. 
and uh, they told me literally a few weeks before that uh, it's going to be there's going to be a gap between. So I was like, oh, okay, this is this is going to be even more like work. But for me, I'm fit. I'm fit. I'm ready. I'm strong. You know, I'm, I'm, I've come here to showcase that I'm serious about this boxing thing, and that you know my main goal is to end Jake Paul, end his bullshit, end everything that he he stands for. And uh, this is me doing it bit by bit. So with me fighting Pineda, like, it's going to be a good fight. You know, he's a good long fire. He's got good range. He's got good left body. Uh, and he's got a decent uppercut. And, uh, yeah, he knows how to get away from danger. But he hasn't fought the nightmare, KSI. So, yeah. <laughs> Luis, I'll come to you. Oh, okay. This is a massive opportunity for you. Really, out of nowhere, you get this in front of thousands of people, KSI, in the main event. Tell me what this means to you to be a part of this card and the challenge in front of you. Es una oportunidad enorme para usted. Uh, de repente te dieron esta pelea contra KSI en el evento principal en frente de tanta gente. ¿Qué quiere decir esta oportunidad para usted? Pues, pues para mí representa una gran oportunidad para... Venimos listos, representa una gran oportunidad para mí porque la verdad nunca me ha tocado un magno evento de este, de este tamaño. Me siento muy emocionado, muy feliz y pues venimos de México, venimos listos, venimos listos para el combate, para la guerra. It really is an enormous opportunity for him um, and he's come ready. He's never been in a, in a, a event of this magnitude and he's very excited and very happy. He came from Mexico ready and ready to put on a war. Luis, you say you want a war. Have you seen KSI fight? What do you expect from him? And how do you go in and quite literally shock everyone in attendance and watching worldwide in the main event? How do you beat KSI? Dices que quieres una, una guerra. Has visto a, a KSI pelear? Um, ¿Y qué, qué piensas que va a venir? ¿Con qué piensas que va a venir KSI? ¿Y cómo puede, puede usted um, darle la sorpresa al mundo y ganarle a KSI? Me miré una pelea de él en YouTube, yo no lo conocía, yo no conocía a mi contrincante, creo que es famoso de aquí de Inglaterra, me parece bien, me parece una gran oportunidad y va a estar buena la pelea, eh, pues somos guerreros nosotros de México y nos gusta la acción, nos gusta el combate. He has seen one of KSI's fight. He, did, um, he didn't know his opponent that well, but he knows he's really famous over here and all over the world and here in England. And he knows it's a great opportunity and it's a good fight and, and they're warriors there in Mexico. So he's coming and bringing everything to, to win on Saturday. Callie, Mams, I want to bring you guys in as well. Um, Callie, we'll start with you. Talk to me about what you're seeing on stage right now. Again, you're from the pro scene. Two fights, one night. This is some George Foreman historical stuff we're talking about. Just give me your thoughts on KSI taking this kind of challenge and if this was something that you foresaw when this event came about. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, talking about a man who's been out of the ring 1,015 days, I believe I read. 1,015 days. So it's, it's an ask to come back after 1,015 days in, in, the, in the pro game. Um, and he's, he's fighting a man... Uh, to my right, who he can't really prepare for. And I'll, I'll, I'll ask you a question in a minute, Swarms, if that's OK. Um, because he hasn't fought before. So apart from maybe on the streets of Elton. So unless there's some good CCTV footage, we ain't going to get, you know, it's, it's very difficult to prepare for a man that's never fought before. So in a ring. So that's, that's an ask. And then you've got a pro fighter from Mexico. Now, let me tell you what I normally say of my charges in, in, in the, the classic pro game. No Irish, no Mexicans in your first five fights. It's simple. Because unless you've got other methods to get a Mexican out of the ring, you normally need a shotgun. And there ain't no shotguns allowed in the O2 on Saturday night, so please, kids. Um, so, it, it, on paper, it's a massive ask. I don't know. I don't know what, what Swarms brings to the ring. Um, that's what my first question would be, actually. I'll divert it back. I'll go straight to Swarms. And, you know, I'm, I'm guessing you've had a few tear-ups growing up on the streets. Yeah, and yeah. So two, it's a two-fold question. Mm. One, how would you describe your style? And I was sitting up here, I think, 13, 14 days ago, announcing 
Eubank Ben. I could talk about their styles and you know they've they've got their idols, their fathers. Who would you say is your boxing idol? Uh, who would you compare your style to? Just so, just to give us a an insight onto what we can expect. Are we expecting a Tyson, more of a foreman, more of a haggler? You took the words out of my mouth, Mike Tyson, straight. So it's Bob and Weave. Small, small like him, the Weave, very fast. You'll see on the 27th. I ain't got to say too much. I don't want to give too much away. But yeah, a lot of people will be shocked. That's what I've got to say. I thought you'd say DHL or something like that. Uh, banner. <laughs> <laughs> Mams, I'll come to you as well. Like I said, this is a historic moment. And if KSI is able to get this done, what does it say for his legacy? Being prom like promoting this, fighting twice in the main event, you know this man very well. What does it say to his character and his legacy to be able to go out and get this done? That's, that's his biggest motivator. KSI is, uh, is all about legacy. It doesn't matter um, the amount of money that's offered. It doesn't matter, matter what clout or how much it will do for his career. Um, if, he's not, if he's not passionate about it, if it's not authentic to who he is and how he sees his legacy being left behind, then he won't do it. And I can attest to that. And there's been bucket loads offered for things he's like, absolutely not. And... Um, so this is everything. It's another step in his legacy. So just look forward to him finding a way to top it at some point. And, um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna, we've got some lions and tigers in reserve after the second fight. So um, he'll probably have to fight them and a polar bear. And um, that's, that's all coming, guys. No, but he's, 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 a, he's a mad one. I mean, when we were talking about it, it seems like you set the bar very high. Is there ever a moment you question on Saturday, is it, have you put too much on the cake on the table to bite off? Oh, no, no. I, if anything, I feel like I've got more to give. I mean, yeah. you, you jokingly said to me before, can't we get a third one? <laughs> I did, I did. Like, <laughs> he was not joking, by the I, I, like, but the look, way I train, the way I am, the how, like, in general, like, you've seen my career from the beginning to where it is now. Like, I'm a person that is determined, focused, and I always get what I want eventually. And, you know, with me on this whole, ev whole event, you know, with Alex Pusabi pussying out of the fight, I'm going to say it, he pussied out. He didn't want the smoke. He didn't want any piece of me. I decided, all right, cool, I'll fight Swarms and Pineda two fights in one night to just challenge myself, to try and push myself because... I've worked hard and I work hard and I constantly work hard and I want to prove to everyone and show everyone that I'm someone to be reckoned with. And then when people realize and see what I can do in the ring, they're going to be terrified. No one's going to want to call me out. What are you going to do, what are you going to do in the ring? What do you mean? When I'm going to knock people out, bro. You're going to knock us out, yeah? Yes. All right, cool. All right, cool, cool. Well, I mean, what do you mean cool? It, so it, wait, it's what's going to happen. When I beat you, can I take your fight instead? Could I fight? Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, take yeah. Him, yeah? When, yeah, yeah. I can take him off. When you beat me, yeah, sure. All right, cool. All right, cool. But, bro, you're not going to beat me. All right, bro. Bro, you're, how can you be so delusional? What, what do you, what's wrong with you? Bro, you still can't look me in my eyes, though. Bro, I've stared at you oh, the whole yeah. time. Oh, bro, I walked in there and you wasn't looking me in my eyes. Bro, much, bro, I didn't need to. I was you have to smile at me, bro. bro I was. Friend? I'm not your friend, bro. Don't smile at me. <laughs> Don't smile at me, bro. You're a funny guy. You're still looking at your mic, bro. I'm right here, bro. Okay, All look, right, bro. hi. How you doing, bro? All right, well, look, you'll see. I can't... <laughs> you... <laughs> I, I, I love it because you're trying to piss me off. Wait, wait, wait. Can Pissing I, me can off I, is the last thing you want to do. Can I get some questions now, please? Because Swarms, I think it's my time you. to speak now. Cause let's go to you, Swarms. I'm just hearing bullshit. This has become personal. So personal, man. So what is your final message to a man that you did work <laughs> on some music with, but now things have changed and you're going to go try to take him out? What's your final message to KSI here? There's no... There's no mouth talking, it's just the fists. Like, that's, this is what it's all about, the fists. That's what it's about. You're going to put him away? I'm going to put him away. I'm going to put him away. His forehead's massive. I'm going to put it back down flat again. Get? Yeah. I'm going to put it flat again. He's going to see you, watch. You ain't met someone like me before, watch. 
No, no, I've actually met people like you and worse, I don't think you have. And stronger no, and tougher I, I and with boxing IQ. I don't they think know you what have. they're doing. I don't think okay, you have. Okay, I've sparred people. I don't think you have. Both multiple In people. private school, you don't get all of that, bro. You're good there, man. Yeah, In yeah. Private, private school, you're good yes, there, I was bro. a different yeah. person. Yeah, now I'm, you're good there. I'm 29. We I'm go through it. We go through it, bro. We went through it. Bro. You don't know nothing like that, bro. <laughs> Literally. I'm a different man now. Okay. I'm different. <laughs> All right, come on. Luis, I would like one last question for you. Again, this is a massive opportunity in the main event. You're going against KSI. The world will be watching. How do you get this done? How do you take home this victory to Mexico? Una última pregunta. Es, como dijimos, una oportunidad enorme en el evento principal. Todo el mundo va a estar mirando. Um, ¿Cómo ganas? ¿Cómo, cómo salís victorioso? el sábado pues eh, voy a utilizar mi, mi estrategia de boxeo venimos trabajando aquí yo y mi entrenador caro de méxico vamos a, a usar defensa y contragolpe uh, he's going to use his, his boxing skills and his boxing strategies you know he's been working really hard with his trainer caro in mexico um, and he says that he's mostly going to be using his defense and counter punching in order to, to, to win the fight. KSI, okay, so you've heard both of the final messages from the men on stage. What mm -hmm. is your final message to not only these two men, but the fans watching worldwide on Saturday night? Knockouts. All right. You're going to see knockouts. It's going to be huge. I mean, the whole card is stacked. We've got amazing on the card, but then with my fights as well, it's going to be beautiful. You're going to want to see every minute of it. Every single minute, trust me.